want to make sure I record it correctly. Okay, friends, so glad you are here today. So we are going to do a little bit of our usual stuff that we normally do, but most of the time when we do these meetings, um, I try to keep them short uh, just to help you know like what's going on and things like that um, and what you should do right away. But the nice thing is this falls at the end of a month and many people have kind of checked off their goals for the month. They're thinking about the next month. Some of us are still working towards goals this month and I'm absolutely cheering you on. I'm working towards some of those goals as well. Either way, it's always really good to take time to not just strategize, but to work on ourselves. And this is the hardest work, truly. It is easier to do a checklist, but when we actually like think about ourselves and think about what we're not good at, what we need to work on, uh, it's not always nearly as much fun. <laughs> but it's so important because when we do it, you may have heard the phrase before that when your business grow, when you grow personally, your business grows. And it really is true. Um, I've been doing this for 12 years now. When I first started, I never invested in any programs. I did not go to global conference. I didn't do any of those things because I'm a cheapskate. And I thought I can do it all from home. And guess what? Every time I've invested in going to a global conference or another program, I learn and I grow. And guess what? My business grows to pay beyond what I paid for that thing. So I hope that as you're looking at your new year and you're thinking about ways you want to grow, I want to encourage you to invest in yourself and invest in your business if you want it to grow. All that to, to be said that um, Jen and Chelsea and I have all been doing a program with Kristen Boss. Um, and it was one that it took a little convincing for me to do it, but I knew I wanted to do it. Um, and I am so glad I've done it. It's specifically on how to be a, a great leader in network marketing and knowing yourself, learning how to coach yourself and also learning how to coach others. So that's, that's what we've really been working on for the past few uh, months. And we're almost done with our certifi certification, but we had a module uh, kind of recently that really just, I thought this is something I want to take back to the team because I have seen it so much in 12 years of business of people burning out in this. And um, and, and so much of the reason why we burn out is because we do it to ourselves. The business doesn't do it to us. Often we do it to ourselves and we blame the business. And so instead, what I love about this business is it helps reveal what's going on in our hearts and the patterns of our lives. And if we can learn things about ourselves, then we can do better, not just in business, but in all areas. And so, so today uh, I invited both Chelsea and Jen to come into a conversation uh, about a module we recently did called the attributes of a heart led leader. Okay. And so all of us uh, probably want to be leaders and you may think, well, I don't have a team, so I don't need to be a leader yet, but I want you to know that you are a leader because you are uh, a leader to your customers. Your customers are looking at you as the leader who knows more about Shackley than they do. And so when they come to you and they say, Hey, I need help. Uh, they want help <laughs> and they want you to be the expert in a way, maybe not the expert, but at least the person who knows a little bit more that can help them versus you turning around them and saying, well, what do you want help with? <laughs> and they're like, I don't know. I mean, I want to lose weight, but I don't even know where to start. And you say, okay, well, what products do you want to take? I don't know what products to take. You got to tell me like they need us to lead them. Right. And so we have to lead our customers and then lead a team as teams uh, come around and most importantly, lead ourselves because this is your own business. And unfortunately, that's not unfortunate. It's actually the best thing of it. The best thing of it is you don't have a boss over your shoulder saying, you got to do this. This is the deadline. The worst part though, is you don't have a boss over your shoulder saying, you've got to do this. This is the deadline. And you could put it off forever and never get anything done. And so learning to coach yourself is so important. And so we're going to just, there were so many attributes of a heart-centered leader that this may be something that we'll circle back to, but um, I really wanted to highlight ones that really stood out to us. And so if you had a chance to watch the video that I posted is just two minutes was really the, the introduction of this conversation. And I love that they start out, they were talking with a, a psychotherapist and she was saying the price of a leader, um, a, a one of the attributes of a heart-centered leader is they understand the price of being a leader. And so I was like, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What is the price of being a leader? And what she was talking about is you could go work a factory job you could go work at Starbucks, you could work in retail. And yes, there would be hard things about that. But at the end of the day, you would be done and you would get your paycheck and walk away. 
And uh, when you do a job like this, it, being a Shackley, uh, whether you're selling products or you're a business leader, you're working with people and people are unpredictable. People one day will say, hey, I really want to change. I'm ready for a change. I want to, you know, do these products. And then a little while later say, oh, well, it's just kind of expensive. And I don't really know. And I just couldn't stick with it, you know, or, hey, I really want to join your team. I'm ready. I need, I want to make a change in my life. And, oh, well, ah, life has just really been busy. Right. And we've all been both of these people. Right. But yet also we're working with people that have been in these places. And sometimes it's, it's frustrating. Right. But that is also the cost of being a leader. But, but knowing that we can make such an impact as we work with people, but there's also hard things that come with working with people. And that's where learning to take care of ourselves is so, so, so important. And so that's where this grows great into what Jen wanted to share with um, the attribute that really stood out to her, which was prioritizing our well being. And so, Jen, I would love for you to share. And then, Chelsea, feel free to chime in with things about prioritizing your well being that, that stood out to you. And I'll chime in as well. But, Jen, I, I know you come from living this. <laughs> yes. So, I just wanted to add to something you said too um, yes. about being a leader and being a leader to yourself and maybe not having a team because that's, you know, I've only been here seven months, I think we're working on and don't have a team, but I'm adding to my team this week. I am so excited. I'm so overwhelmed and excited. But, um, something that was said. So my very first customer is joining my team as a leader this week. And she said to me, I said, she likes the science. She likes things. I said, well, what, what is it specific that you made you, you know, talk with me about this or whatever. And she said, well, I really believe in the products and they tell me, she goes, but I love the way that you're always there for me. You're always taking care of things. You have information, you suggest things and just the way that you are doing the thing you're doing. So people are watching. Even mm. if you don't have one or you have people, other people are watching. And that hit me really hard this morning. Like, oh, you know, because you talk about our silent walkers, maybe they're available, they'll come back later. But other people are watching what you're doing too. And so I was like, oh, you know, and so that you just, if you think, well, I don't have one and I don't, shouldn't do these things or I'm not doing these things, you should and keep doing it because there are people looking for you and you never know when somebody's going to tell somebody else about you and what you're doing. Now she doesn't see that I'm crazy behind the scenes and all of the things. She just sees what I'm putting out there for her. And so I thought that was important with what you were saying. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. your leadership reflects more than we think it does. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so this whole section that we did was so, it just hit me all over the place. And it really came into play this weekend as I found myself up every morning at six and talking to my last customer at 1030 at night and all the things this weekend. And so prioritizing our well-being, something that I have never done. Um, I've always been somebody's something, mom, sister, daughter, friend, whatever. I, I use it in a negative way saying that I've always been a doormat and I've been happy to do it until it backfired. Um, and so this really talked about knowing when to prioritize yourself so that you do not get burnout. You don't um, get to where you completely shut down in your business and what that looks like. And often we don't know what it looks like because we don't know we're doing it until we just hit a wall and then we can't get back from it. So what got me was knowing how to um, identify what some of the things are when you're starting to get stressed, you're complaining, you're resisting work, you're finding other things to do instead of your work, like that's watching TV, doing the laundry, or I'll get back to this, or I'll do a minute of this. Knowing those things that um, we end up using as excuses for why this business isn't going to work. I'm um, taking time away from my family. So this business isn't for me because I'm doing this and, or I don't have enough time for my business because I'm busy doing this and I can't keep up my house or whatever. We make these excuses so that we can blame the business for not being what we want it to be. When it actually turns out, we haven't learned how to prioritize and get rid of things that are non-essential. Now, I'm not saying get rid of your family, they're not essential. What I'm saying is prioritizing the time that you're doing, also making time for yourself. This weekend, I thought, oh, I'm going to be exhausted. And I thought, okay, these couple hours, I do have things I have to do, but I went and did straight those things and didn't veer from them. So I didn't have a list. I needed the Black Friday shop where I had two things I had to go get. I went and got the things and I came back home and did what I needed to do. Um, so these when we're doing this stuff and the things that we're thinking, they really paralyze us from 
either moving forward again in our business because we are so overwhelmed it's like we just completely back down and so finding that balance setting boundaries against things that are non-essential that are not required i love the hallmark channel i will always make that a thing i will not be shy about it however i have found myself lately i'm not watching every time i'm at home and holding down my couch I don't know when is the last time I actually watched when I think I might've fell asleep to it last night, but I'm watching so much less TV because not because I said, Oh, I'm not watching TV anymore, but because I prioritized what was important and that wasn't it. Cause if I am doing that, I'm not doing my business. And if I am sitting on my chair doing business and listening to the Walmart channel, I'm not doing hundred percent to what I'm doing. So that um, is just, those were huge for me on figuring out how to do that and put your mindset where you're most comfortable and not completely giving yourself more stress. Um, a thing Kristen said was, if everything is urgent, then nothing is urgent. If everything you have in your life is so important, you have nothing important. And that really hit me because it is true. And as I started to think, I'm in a, reading a new book too, as I started to think about the things that I could eliminate that aren't essential. Yes, I need to do my laundry. Yes, I need to clean my house. There's things like that, but I don't have to make that my entire day so I get zero done. And then I go to bed thinking, wow, I didn't work on my business today. And I let that consume my mind overnight where now I'm not sleeping. So just finding that time where if you can rest, give yourself some time, let your mind be clear. You're going to think of the things that maybe you're stuck on or whatever. I, I would say my best thinking is in the shower or when I am brushing my teeth for whatever reason, I'm in there and I'm like, well, oh, I need like a waterproof notepad to write down my things because I'm, you know, getting ready for work and all of a sudden all these things will come. So it really just hit me on a lot of us put ourselves last because we're putting ourselves first for everybody else until we are so strained. We don't know how to get out of it. I mean, that's so powerful, even for your health story too, but then also for your business story and then no, understanding your tendency to do those. I tend to work a lot too. One of the things she said is, uh, for us to be able to understand, like, it is safe for me to not think about my business right now and to rest, you know, and even for me to say, God is in control of these things. Like that is what brings me comfort. And, uh, but sometimes I just want to be in control and I want to do all the things and how much do I do this even outside of my business life? And I have to rest and say, I'm going to, I'm going to have peace and let God take care of it. That's so good. Anything else you wanted to add there, Chelsea? Yeah, I was going to say, I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me from that section was, um, you know, even though I wasn't working my business, I was still thinking about my business, even if I wasn't actively like messaging with somebody or doing a presentation or something. Um, and I think just giving myself permission to be present wherever I am, whether that's with the business or with my family and to have that confidence and peace and security and the fact that I can be present in both and my business isn't going to fall apart or my family isn't going to fall apart, you know? Um, so that was the biggest thing for me for that. For yeah. Sure. So good. Yeah. So good. Well, I'll transition to you because I would love for you to share about ambition and what really stuck out to you about, about one of those heart led leader attributes. Yeah. So there were, there were two things about ambition. So when we think of ambition, we just think of like our goals, like what do we want in our business? What do we want in our life? Um, and a lot of times we can be told, you know, like, this is what you should be doing, or like, this is what leaders are doing. This is what, you know, the type of things that are working for so-and-so you should do those too. Um, or even just like incentives and different things we're working towards from the company and different promos, you know, um, it, it's a lot that's coming at us all the time. And so having this ability as a leader to look at it and say, what is it that I actually want? what really aligns with me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's great when promos and incentives align, but they don't always, and that's okay. You know, um, one thing Charlene's always said is, you know, building this business is like the ice cream sundae and all the incentives and trips and everything is kind of just like the, the cherry on top, you know, it's mm -hmm. not necessary, but it's, it's great when it aligns with our overall mission. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, when we think about having this right size ambition, it's it's just this idea of being in alignment with what we really want and how we want to show up. And it can help us to, you know, just to stay central to what's really important to us. Um, and I think, you know, and Jen had just kind of mentioned this about 
um, alignment and, you know, we're pulled in all different directions. Um, and so it can seem like we're doing all the right things because we should be doing them. But at the end of the day, if that is, you know, if it doesn't feel right for us, something feels off, something in our intuition or our gut says, mm, I don't really, you know, like this is not my style or whatever, like just having this freedom to show up as a leader in that and make the decisions for how we spend our time, how we prioritize so that when we're watching Hallmark or we're hanging out with our kids or whatever it is, like we can be okay with that, but also be okay with the fact of, you know, I'm not doing that thing right now because this is much more important to me and I'm going to work on this. Um, you know, and I think this time of year too, it's really easy to fall into one thing after the next. And, you know, we're working towards big goals for the end of the year. Um, but our business isn't a monthly business. It's not an, even a yearly business. Our business is a lifetime mission that, you know, has just turned into the vehicle that's driving us to be able to do all these other things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so the other thing that I want to mention was when it comes to ambition that aligns with our values, a really good test for this in your life is to look at, you know, what is the ambition? What is the thing that you want? And then is that showing up in the actions that you're taking? Because if there's a misalignment there, so say, I mean, we hear it all the time, like all the actions stay the same, all the habits stay the same of everything we've ever done. Well, there's a misalignment there. So it's really this right says ambition is being honest with ourself of, well, why aren't my actions aligning? Yeah. You know, is it like, what am I willing to do or not to do? And am I okay with continuing to have the same results or am I not okay with that? And so what changes do I need to make so that I can show up, you know, in my own life as a leader and in my own business um, in a way that is in alignment? And if it doesn't align, then just continuing to dig in deeper and get curious about that of, you know, if you said, oh, I want to be a master coordinator, but we're still doing brand new ambassador things, you know, then maybe there's a little bit of disconnect there and, you know, it's time to make some shifts or it could just be to shift some ambitions and not necessarily dream smaller, but also to look at what season you're in and uh, make it realistic, big enough to push you, but you know, seasons change. So I just, I really liked that section of, you know, where's the misalignment and there's, there's something even deeper, you know, maybe, maybe your goal is not what everyone else's goal is. Maybe it's something else and why, and getting curious about that and, you know, finding what really does align. You know, I have several people on my team that the incentives don't motivate them, but they're motivated by this greater mission of helping, you know, so many people yeah. and, you know, letting this business be that vehicle for that. And I love that. And then I have people on my team that are super motivated by incentives and that's great, you know, but figuring out like what it is, what is that deeper thing of keeping it a right sized ambition so that we're constantly growing but we're doing it because it's what aligns with us mm -hmm. and not just what we think we should do or what someone else has said that we should do or, you know, some peer pressure or whatever it may be. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just because Shackley says you need to do this doesn't mean you have to, you need to do it, you know, right. <laughs> so much of it is knowing being solid and why we're here and then what we want and, um, and being, you know, willing to grow in what we want too, but also just because Shackley says you need, like you can earn AirPods right now. Well, what if you don't really want AirPods <laughs> actually? And the truth is I, I do kind of want AirPods, but I'm not sure I want to work that hard right now. So I'm okay with that, you know? Yeah. So Well, and I think we've done this well in our team. And I think you've modeled this well for us, Alyssa, that our team doesn't necessarily look like other teams in the company because we all have really little kids at home for the most part, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's looked different and, um, and that's okay. <laughs> right. Like that's okay. And we've had seasons where we're sprinting and running and we've had seasons where like me recently with a bunch of kids being in sports for the first time ever and having to navigate, like, okay, work is going to look different right now yeah. um, and figuring out what that is. Totally. Totally. And then also figuring out how to make it work and not making it your excuse. Cause that's the other right. end of the, of the extreme too, that, um, I really got a lot from, 
from that where they talked about that too. So that was really good. So um, right. awesome. Well, uh, the last thing that really stood out to us that I just wanted to share about is that heart-centered leaders um, know how to return the focus to the customer when they start getting obsessed about the bottom line. I thought that was so good because how many times have you kind of wanted a goal and you wanted it no matter what? And I love how she talks about how sometimes she feels like she gets goblin energy where a goblin sits in a cave and he counts his coins and is just feeling like really rich, right? Um, but he's not helping anybody. Um, and we are in this strange business where our goal is to help people, but we also make money by helping people. I think that's so awesome that we make money by helping people, but sometimes we can focus more on the making money side and forget about helping people. And that's where they said a heart-centered leader knows how to shift that and say, but what is best for my customer? And I do love that so many of the incentives they give us, I love that, I think this just goes to show Shackley's heart, the incentives they give us best benefit our customers. Like a customer becoming a member with a 150 order and me getting a bonus for that, both of those things align so that I don't feel bad when I'm saying to someone, yeah, well, you'll wanna make your first purchase at 150 because you get free shipping and you get 15% discount. Or if you do the ready set wellness, you get a free product with it, you know, um, so many great deals for them. And also I get $25, but they win and I get to win too at the same time. And I love that those things align. But there's other times where, you know, somebody's saying, hey, money's, money's really tight for me. And I, I think I just want a bottle of probiotics, um, but I'd love to do something more later than I know not to push it just because I want that extra star, right? And so for us as heart-centered leaders, we know to return our focus to the customer when we're feeling worried or obsessed about the bottom line. So anything else you wanted to add to that, Jen or Chelsea? Yeah, I think that that is perfect because um, in other like businesses that, you know, like will come talk to you about stuff, they are trying to meet all their stuff. Just, I mean, just like we are, if we want to be somewhere, but um, knowing why, why we are pushing, like, am I pushing because they really could use this and I want them to have the information or am I pushing because I need, I need them to do this for me. And if it comes to a I need it for me. For me, that is the wrong, the wrong direction. And so as long as, you know, it's for, I'm doing this because I know it would help. And I just want to get that information to them. Right. And you tell it a different way, or I, if I, if they don't do this, then I'm not going to get whatever. And so that turns out wrong. That's how I, I took that. And it was that what I want to say. One thing about Chelsea's deal is that uh, what she talked about was so great because a lot of times, and I've got to say, I have been so fortunate to have met you ladies when I did, because the three of us talked about this um, at conference while we were um, just at our room, but you tell me this over and over, you will say, well, this is what's worked for me. Everybody is different. What works for me may not work for you, but here are some suggestions when I ask that this might be, or advice like that, because sometimes new people, especially me at first was like, okay, well, that works for her. I better figure out how to do that exactly. But some of that stuff didn't work for me. I'm not real social media. I'm trying to learn better and do the things better, but I am a face-to-face -face talker, an in-person talker. And so that has really worked well for me. So I would like to expand on what works for me because it takes a lot of time. Sometimes with these people, a few hours at a time, but at the same time, knowing that it's okay if something works for somebody else, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean this whole thing isn't going to work for you. It just means you got to find what does work for you. Just like these supplements, I tell people, just because it worked like this for my body, we have to find the right mix for you, what works for your body. We are all different. And that was really important. It was really important for me to hear that that's okay. I love that. I love that. And, and there's some great stuff happening in the chat here. Both Rebecca and Don are talking about like the seasons of our lives. And, you know, Rebecca's got young kids at home. Don has her baby that just flew the coop. So she's an empty nester and that's a whole new world that I'll be in eventually and faster than I believe. <laughs> and so uh, it's so good to know that these seasons of our lives, like we have to kind of prepare ourselves for the emotions we're going to feel at those times. And then how does our business fit in with that? And, and I encourage you to think, 
how can my business fit in? Like for actually for me, when my kids were young, I really felt like that was the best time for me to build a business because my kids would nap. So that, that was a huge thing. <laughs> or I would say, you're going to have quality time in your room. Mom's going to work because I knew as they got older and I had more kids it was only get busier, but that's how I looked at it for me. And you know, you might look at it differently, but I encourage you to say, how could I make my business work for me right now in this season? And what can I let go from my business in this season too, where I'm saying that that's not, you know, what I want to do want to make my priority. I love doing so much online because my house is always a mess because I have a bunch of kids. <laughs> so things like that and figuring out like how you can make it work for you if it's important to you. And if it's not the most important thing, that's okay. Does this business fill you up in your heart? Cause you get to be a part of this team and you love to help people here and there. That's okay too. And nobody should shame you for the dreams that you have and what you want out of this business. Even if when we come to these meetings, some of us are talking about dreams and goals that are up here and you feel like your dream and goal is over here. All of us have dreams and goals and they're not on a, on a scale. And so um, I just want to encourage you in that to have confidence in the ambition you have right now and the focus you have right now and figuring out instead of making an excuse, figuring out how it can work and also saying, instead of an excuse, I'm just, I don't want to make this a priority right now. That's not an excuse. That's you saying, I don't want to make this a priority. And that's okay. Cause you get to do that. And so that's where this course has been so empowering because it's really helped us with our language and our thinking so that I'm not shaming myself when I'm saying, Oh, I can't host a party because my house is a mess. Um, versus how can I make this work? Otherwise, I guess I'll go online. So anything else to add to that, Chelsea, before we hang up? Well, I was just going to say, I had an example of that this weekend of what you shared, Alyssa, about customer focused. Um, I, I have a neighbor who she is a customer, you know, and she was like, oh, I, I wonder how the skincare smells. Right. So I said, well, just come over. You can try all my stuff. You know, like there's no need for you to like just guess, <laughs> like come and try all my stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, and so she did. And then she said, well, what day of the deals is going to be the best one for me? And so I was, of course, I feel like there's always that tendency that's like, well, I wanted to order now. Right. But in this moment, I was like, you know what? I think honestly, because you want some of the body stuff too, like you should wait till Monday because we have the free gift on there. Right. Ah. And uh, it was just funny because she ended up ordering that day, which was sudden Saturday, I think. And then she ordered again on Sunday. She ended up doing the whole skincare kit and wow. said, Merry Christmas to me because Aww. she tried it and she loved it so much. And I was just like, you know, this is a perfect example of like, when we put the customer's needs first and we don't put that pressure, like, because I need you to do it. Mm -hmm. Like it, you know, it tends to work itself out in that. that Absolutely. Kind of and I'm, I'm yeah. certain she didn't feel that from you. She felt no. Chelsea just wants to take care of me. And I love to support Chelsea because she takes care of me. I love that. Right. Absolutely. Great story. Well, I hope this has been encouraging for you guys and just, um, you know, you're able to, um, to walk away from this thinking about, okay, well, what is my focus and what do I want out of my business? What do I want out of my business right now in the month of December? How do I want to finish the year? I've seen so many things on social media talking about do this big thing. And I've also heard other people saying, it's okay to rest and be where you are. And you know what? Both messages are true. <laughs> so think about where you are and which one you want to, you want to use to empower yourself right now. Because you could say, I'm going to rest and you could shame yourself with resting, or you could say, I'm going to take a rest so I can recoup and be ready in January, or you can shame yourself, right? So it's amazing how the messages in our head make a huge difference in how we do everything in life. So uh, anyway, I hope this has been encouraging to you, to your heart. Um, and um, maybe we'll re re revisit this uh, topic later with some of the other attributes of a heart-led leader. So I really love where our team is. I love the heart attributes that you have. And I know that you're impacting people for good. I love hearing your story, Chelsea, because I know that lots of you have stories like that where you've impacted people for good because of the things that happen in your heart. And I just think that's amazing. So thanks for being here for this conversation. And uh, we'll see you next week, my friends. All right, bye.